serving in the military doesn't make you a hero. So to understand my unpopular opinion you may need to know about the military-industrial complex that Eisenhower and General Smedley Butler spoke about. The more war there is the more money there is to be made. I don't find it honorable to throw our brothers and sisters into corporate oil wars, proxy wars, and general resource wars for the elite, then to not proportionally take care of them when they get back. Not to mention all the lies that took us into war over false pretenses, we the go into be the savior just to leave a quagmire. I. E. Lydia where they now openly sell slaves due to US intervention. I just don't find anyone that's a cog in the military-industrial complex to be a hero because it allows more misery to perpetuate under the guise of being some humanitarian savior, defensive military cool, we've used them aggressively for quite a long time though. I think everyone on the sub need to read the book All Quiet on the Western Front. It contrasts very well this public opinion of glorifying war, yet war being this horrific thing that means nothing to the people actually fighting it. It just degrades people into monsters. Our service members are brave, but after that we are all pawns to the game. I've always said, to serve is always honorable, but not necessarily heroic. I've seen true heroism, and if everyone had, they wouldn't throw the term around as lightly. 9-11 definitely made patriotism and military heroism more mainstream and popular. I was a kid in the 90s so I can't really speak to how the military was viewed pre-9-11. But I definitely don't remember soldiers being glorified as much or hearing how they were protecting our freedoms in the 90s. I believe most people who serve know this. It's the super patriotic civilians and bro vets who don't. I did serve and I agree with you to an extent. There are certain things that I was oblivious to as an 18 year old that when I found out about it made me pretty uneasy. That being said, I am proud of my service. There are still missions taking place that serve a good purpose for the defense of the US and our allies. For instance, China is basically trying to take over Japan and any other islands they think they own by building artificial islands around them and claiming them as their territory. We strategically place ships in such a way that prevents that from happening. Also, nuclear deterrence is a big deal. A lot of people disagree with that but we have submarines playing hide the nuclear missile all over the place to preempt any sort of attack on the US. There are still honorable missions taking place so you can't put it all into one box, but that doesn't excuse the plethora of missions that are exactly what you're talking about. Are you saying Neil McBeal the Navy SEAL isn't a hero? Not all, but some ex-military think serving gives them the okay to acting like a shitty person. I'm not in the military myself, but I've worked with, and personally known ex-military, and some of them had this, I can do whatever I want because I was in the military attitude. It's incredibly annoying. I've been in the military for three years now and don't really do shit. Haven't been deployed or anything. When people thank me for my service it always feels really awkward and undeserved. I'm in the military and I am no hero at all. I was a dirt poor kid looking for a way out of a shitty situation. The military for me, and many others, is a means to escape what you were born into, and create a better life for yourself. For me this meant money for school, and some fallback career skills while earning a paycheck. It's a two-way street. The military industrial complex uses me as a warm disposable body to accomplish its goals, as horrendous as they may be sometimes and I use it as a means to accomplish mine. Make no mistake, neither side of this relationship gives a single shit about the other. I wish there was a better way for me to rise up, and my advancement didn't come at the expense of other poor people in countries with vast oil reserves, but it does. I could have chosen to be a slave to student debt for a large majority of my life, or a slave to the machine for a short while. As an 18-year-old kid, I chose the machine. I really can't reconcile it in my mind any other way than just doing what I had to to survive. I'm sure the poor bastards on the other side feel the same way. I think this is for USA because in my country almost 85% who joins army and military in general are sons of someone important enough, and those stupid kids are really dumb and often they don't even like their job. How is that an unpopular opinion? Is war really that glorified among masses? 
or qualified to run a political office. I see this on so many newcomers running. Vote for me I served my country, and I'll serve you too. With real leadership, and discipline. So I'm in the military as well, not American, and I can say, speaking for most soldiers, I did it for me, I did it BC I was good at it and I felt alive. No one joins BC serving your country BC you love it so much, you join because you want some exercise and money. I was in, I don't feel at all like a hero and get incredibly uncomfortable when someone thanks me for my service. I had this one friend who constantly shat on us and told us to show him respect since he was the only of us who served. Years later I decided to do some digging only to found out he was only a chef in the military and was never in the field. If nobody served willingly, there would be a draft. Comedy legend Bill Burr does a great bit on this, https colon slash slash u2 b slash mcaljpu1bw4. The bit starts at 220. I think something you have to acknowledge, no matter your ideological, political, economic, or otherwise beliefs and biases, that anyone believing in their cause enough to put down their life for it is incredibly commendable. Anyone from a volunteer marine to a terrorist to a revolutionary all have that in common. Setting aside all the semantic allegiances, that is fundamentally something that for many would constitute a hero and sometimes true heroes did such things. My parents are both Vietnam era vets, and both of them highly advise against joining up with any branch of the armed forces. Even now my mom's told me that we should thank someone for their service but not for protecting our freedoms. Like the only thing they protect are the interests of our politicians. I agree with only using the military in defense, but all those decisions to start wars were made by people much higher up in the military, not the soldier. They fight for their country, and that is why I respect them. Of course, there are always exceptions, and people who are in the military for bad reasons don't deserve to be in the military. The U.S. shouldn't get involved in anything that is not a threat to America. Soldiers are sacrificed and die for meaningless wars in the past couple decades, and that is wrong.